Good to see you. Hello. <laughs> I had quite a week. What you been doing? With work? What's that? Yeah, work and getting the quartet going. Yeah, and me I, too. <laughs> I registered at some online matchmaking sites again. Really? Yeah, so I'm not... I don't know. You don't know how you're feeling about that? Yeah. Yeah, that's tricky. Yeah. But it's exciting. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Well, it's a lot of work to know what you want and who you are. Yeah. Nothing like dating, though, to find out if you know that. <laughs> yeah. I quit last time because I, I thought, you know, I'm in no position to put myself out there. I don't know the first. I'm not over my ex-wife, you know. Yeah. Uh, I just said, you know what, I don't know a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Wait. why I quit. Yeah. Do you feel like you're in a different place now? Yeah. I I I said to her on on the phone to her. I said, you know, I'm over you now. So, I mean, I, she received it well. I received that well, and and I I think that that's that's honest. Good. But I don't know if that means I, you know, I like being single an awful lot. The only thing yeah. is I'm thinking about my twilight years. Yeah. What about you? So, oh. You can be single and enjoy dating too. Well, right? that's the, what I've discovered recently is you can enjoy flirting. Yep. You don't have to date. I, I have, I have several lady friends, you know, uh, there's a lady I baptized on my mission. Mm. She's just, you know, about my age, maybe two or three years younger. She's good. She looks good. I call her guapa, uh, <laughs> you know, and we, we flirt, you know. Her husband died five years ago or so, and, and mm -hmm. you know, both of us, I mean, we've talked about it. It's fun to flirt. It's nice to have feminine attention. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, good. Yeah. I'm glad you're moving forward on that, and at least exploring. It's good. Yeah. Huh. How about you? I've been working on our quartet here, um, working on relationship stuff, and uh, at couple therapy this morning. That's always tiring. Oh. We have our first quartet rehearsal tonight, so I'm doing stuff to get ready for that. And well, quartet rehearsal is exhausting. Yeah, but it's exciting. It'll be really fun. Have you done any more about harmonics? No, not a lot. One, I think I told you one of the new, our new tenors did a lot of barbershop being and knows a lot about ringing chords and stuff. So we'll... Well, that's... See, we'll see. Have, yeah, having a barbershopper with you going, that was a dirty chord. We got to ring these chords. That, that yeah. helps. That, having that perspective helps. And, and I... I after you you uh, um, shared with me, you know, about uh, your your discovery about the harmonics, I found out that the seventh on a dominant seventh chord is particularly different than the equally tempered uh, a minor seventh interval. And so, yeah, on those seventh chords, you can really make a difference by singing the harmonics. So, we'll see. I mean. You know, with the quartet, getting them to learn their parts precisely, <laughs> and uh, and then listen to each other. And I really liked what that one barbershopper says: soprano, alto, tenor. Listen to the bass. Bass. Listen to the soprano. I even I even made a little, a little diagram. crayon crayon graphic with little ears, you know, in the right directions. <laughs> So yeah, well, yeah. Know. I figured out a standing formation so that the bass is behind. We have two bases, so it's a it's a double quartet. So that we have the bases where everybody is near them and can hear them. So hopefully, hopefully but, that'll be good. But you know what else? Um, my friend Joe Bunker recorded our practice, and I just love listening to it. So even though it's our very first week. It's just exposure. We have people just blowing their parts here and there. 
and right. not listening to each other. You know, quote and quote, not listening to each other. I love it's a blast listening to. So you yeah. know, just yeah. just have fun. Yeah, and like I just smiling faces. Yeah, and live performances are just fun, even if they're iffy. They're fun. So I mean, even if they're not accurate. You know. Yeah. Yeah, we have fun practicing just for us. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah, they're exhausting. Therapy's exhausting. Yeah. Yes, it is. But it's also energizing. Like, I feel there's a lot of good energizing things happening. So. Yeah. You feel like good. you're living the dream. It's like, wow. Yeah. Or at least I'm real close to on my way to living the dream. <laughs> well, you know, last week when we sang Hark the Herald Angels Sing, you know, I couldn't help afterwards saying, this is why we do this. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Every once in a while, yeah, I've been putting the music folders together, and just a couple times I've been like, I can't wait to sing! I can't wait to sing this again! I can't yeah. Wait to... yeah. And the first Noel, oh my goodness, what a song! <laughs> do you, you love know, that one? It's only two verses, but it never ceases to just, I, 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 I it's just, it's just, what a song. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so, Fun yeah. thing. Well, did you want, did you have any questions about what we talked about the other day? Or did you want to well, talk um, about anything or what were you thinking? Well, uh, no, unless you want to talk about it again. Um, I, I thought it was really interesting that well, okay. To Maybe me, we could recap what it was so that. Okay. Yeah. Well, you had said that you had mentioned at some time that you remembered our ch our family before you were born, and I interpreted that to mean that you remembered being in the womb. You said no, no, that's not it. So. What did it mean? I just remember things that happened in our family that I wasn't alive when they happened. And I know that I was there at least observing things happening in our family. Yeah. And so. there were specific, there's specific memories. Yeah. Just two and they're minor. But yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. But they were, but I, I was young enough when I articulated it that, I mean, I think that they were not planted by anything, right? Like they were just memories that I had. And then I found out, well, that happened before you were born. You couldn't have, you can't remember that kind of yeah. thing. So. Yeah. And that's the danger with a lot of people that have abnormal experiences. Uh, they quickly get shut down. Yeah. They learn, they learn not to, to talk about them. Which I think is really harmful because like that early planting, I mean, there's, this happens in a lot of ways, but that early planting of self doubt, um, I think is really, really harmful to. Especially since she was young. Yeah. And then, I mean, mine was really minor, right? I didn't have some special capabilities. I mean, actually, I think I might have that, but and I shut those down too, or whatever. But I mean, I don't, for me, it wasn't a huge part of my existence and being, but some people it is, right? It's a really big part of them. And they're told that that's impossible or that can't be, or you have to pretend that's not the way it is. Yeah, in but, some in some small way, you're, you're being told not to be like Galileo, where he says, the church tells me this, my eyes tell me that. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I'm supposed to believe what you're saying instead of what I'm experiencing or what I know on some level. Yeah. yeah. Tricky stuff. But then there's, there's people that don't experience anything like that. And to them, they're like, why should I believe you? Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't experience anything at all other than, I mean, as far as I know, what my eyes can see. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's my, rea I don't, I'm not, I don't know of anything. I mean, I have a good imagination. Yeah, I don't. 
Well, I, I mean, I've heard of people that, that um, when I say I can see something, I see it in my mind. Yeah, and I don't see anything in my mind. Oh, wow. At all, unless I'm dreaming. Wow. I, well, I, dream I can see stuff, but in real life, nothing. Yeah. Well, my ability to see is part of my career. Yeah. As an engineer, I can see, I can see what is going on when I look at a map. I I can visualize exactly what's happening. I actually see it. So maybe I do. That's the thing. People with synesthesia or blind, they have a different experience than 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 you and I, and you have a different experience than I, and I have a different experience than you. That's a, that's maybe a key insight you know yeah i mean i think that's part of why humility is so important right that we don't insist that everybody else is having the same experience that i'm having when they must be having the same experience i'm having right right like if you can't get past that i don't know that's a really that's a a very closed way to exist i guess i don't know well that's that's related to a really core motto or, 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 or value that, that I've had in the last few years is, is faith. I don't know anything about your inner life and you don't know anything about mine and, and, and I think we, we get to choose to have faith in each other. I, I, you know, I have lots of reasons to believe that you have empathy and that you're caring and that your intentions are good but and and, and people can can give indications to the contrary but i think we i don't know how we can live without faith and that's how a friendship and a relationship works you choose to have faith until you choose not to yeah well and yeah, I think that trust is huge. And that's part of being open, right, to the world. Am, am I willing to trust the people around me? Or am I not willing to trust the people around me? And I, I've never, until you were talking, like connected trust and humility in my mind. But that same humility that says my experience is not the same as your experience and makes me open to the possibility of other people's experiences is some, uh, maybe related to the trust that makes me say, okay, well, I'm going to trust that you are having the experience you're telling me that you're having, instead of saying, no, that's impossible. I've never experienced that or whatever. Like maybe there's a connection between trust and humility that I hadn't thought about. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I assume everyone sees everything I see, right? I guess, and and I see everything you see, of course. Right. <laughs> well, and after after couple therapy, you find out very quickly that that's not true. We're not both seeing the same thing. We do not see the same relationship that's happening here. And you know, I might say, well, obviously this isn't working, and that's not obvious, right? Like that is not obvious to the other person. Like they may very well. Be like, well, obviously that was working fine, except that you had this weird quirk and so you saw things weird or whatever, right? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you learned that. <laughs> yeah, and, well, and, and the hard part I think is saying, well, your experience is just as valid as mine. So I'm doing things, I'm doing the things that you think I'm doing. That, Even if that, I don't that's, see that. Let's say that again. I'm doing the things that you think I'm doing, at least to you. I'm doing yeah. them to you. Do I'm I... doing to you the things that you think I'm doing to you because it's to you. So, and it's happening to them. They're not making it up. Right. So if I'm driving you crazy, <laughs> I am driving you crazy and you're going crazy. Yeah, and I can say, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not really doing that. You're, you're wrong. I'm not doing that. But but the truth is, they're going crazy. The truth is, they're going crazy. 
and the, and I'm part of it because I'm part of the relationship and the relationship's driving them crazy. I got, I, I mean, I look at our relationship and it, it, it means it's very much one way, right? I see it. This is what's been happening, blah, blah, blah. This is your part, my part. That is not what he's seeing at all. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so if we have trust and humility, then I have to say, okay, what you're seeing is valid. Yeah. So how's this, <laughs> how's this relationship going to work? What kind of relationship is this going to be, etc.? Right? Right. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What other things have you been thinking about? Well. Or is there more about you? You mentioned things like differences and... I mean, I think you meant differences between our experiences. Maybe we already talked about that. Well, the the big word is faith. Mm. That you've been thinking about? Yeah. Uh, to me, just the word faith these days mostly means um, having faith in each other. Um, I, 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 you know, just as of about a month or so ago, I'm not a secular humanist anymore. And, and I do think there's evidence to that, 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 that consciousness is not entirely contained by the brain. But I don't really think, I, 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 I personally, and not at this moment in my life, except the feeling that I need to have faith. Maybe I'm a lucky man and everything's just going great, right? If my life were a shambles, I'd have to have faith in a higher power. I, I, except where the humility comes in that you've been talking about. I need to be humble and realize there's a lot I don't know and I need to have faith that somehow things will work out and people will have faith in me. It's back to other people though. So I, I just wanted to say, I, for me lately, faith is, is directed at seven billion other people. Like trusting that all the other humans in the world are good and are trying, at least their intentions are, yeah. are good. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Lately I've been, I, I, I even when I was a secular humanist, I would do something like this, you know. I, I, I bless Putin that he will have peace and joy and contentment and, you know. Because be... that's the only way he's going to stop doing what he's doing. <laughs> right, right. And Netanyahu and Kim and Maduro Duro and Trump and Harris and, and the whole bit. Yeah, so... You got and that that that's part of the faith. Yeah. Well, and the for me it's kind of that life and people, human humans, humanity can do something good with the mess that is being created by wounded people. Right. And that and, and, and that that's the miracle. See, you know. Oh, this and that, and, and social media is ruining us all, feeding us with algorithms. We're, we just can't help our little, little, highly evolved ape uh, um, uh, impulse to click on the, the, the bias confirming button on YouTube or Google News or Facebook. I, I want to keep the friends that confirm my biases. And it's all a shambles. It's all going down the toilet. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Poverty, poverty is ending. Life yeah. expectancy, yeah, it's having trouble, but it's been going up, consistent. Intelligence is increasing, objectively. Humans are increasing in their intelligence. Uh, 
just objective score after objective score. There's lots of countries. There's 20 countries that are eating our lunch, doing better on multiple measures than, than the USA. There's just, there, there's a lot of reasons not to be down at the mouth. So objectively speaking, yes, yes, we have the democracies experiencing a uh, backsliding. Life expectancy has been declining in the United States. There are problems. But, yeah, it's not just faith. Objectively speaking, we're moving forward. So faith and, and getting a little bit, open my eyes a little, you know. It, we're not about, we're not just about, yeah, we could, we could destroy ourselves. We have to become more conscious. We could destroy ourselves with new, we have the ca capability of destroying ourselves now. Because yeah. we're a highly technological species, but... And it could happen. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's kind of like, we have, we have to, like the Bible would say, we live in the valley of the shadow of death. I mean, from day to day, humans, as humans, we have to know that I could die next minute. Right? I could die next minute, me. The nuclear thing or whatever, that's just humanities. You could die next minute. Like humanity could die next minute or next century or whatever. That's that's reality. I to me that's not that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's it's a it's a temporary thing, right? But temporary isn't necessarily bad. Like so, it clouds there and then and then it dissipates and it's not there anymore. Well, that doesn't mean. It wasn't nice to have the cloud there for a minute. You know what I mean? Like, for me, I'm like, well, life's great. So it ends tomorrow. I don't know. Humanity, we're great. We're doing great things. We're enjoying this. We're doing this. And then we end tomorrow. But I, I really feel like we're. it's all part of a bigger reality, you know, a bigger existence of, because life's a lot bigger than, than our little Earth humanity, obviously, if you look at the universe. Like, right? Existence is much bigger than that well that's apparently the fact <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, that, this, I mean this is an interesting subject do you want to talk a little bit about uh that sure because uh, okay I, the the question is the 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 ethical utilitarian aspect of the question to be a to to believe to believe conscious uh, uh, let me bring up a term i got to ask you about a term this is a sincere sincere i have no clue here cluelessness okay. i i have not spent a lot of time paid a lot of attention to buddhist circles there are some words and i'm not even going to be saying them right dualism duality monism uh, Okay, do you know anything about that? Do you have a good understanding of what people talk mean? Okay, okay, here's, <laughs> let me, my perception. I, I get the idea, it seems to me, it sounds like people are saying, it, the, the, nor, the, the, the normal scientific question is of whether it's just the ape or whether there is a consciousness uh, the brain is an instrument for consciousness, or whether the brain is consciousness. Is, is duality and monism have anything to do with that, or is it is a total crazy spiritual concept that I, I can't get? Yeah, I don't know that those, I don't know exactly what those terms are in the spiritual sense. I don't know. Okay, so, so we won't, so is it best not to talk about those terms? Well, yeah, let's not use those terms. I think those concepts or whatever you're, yeah, that would be great to talk okay. about. Okay, yeah, because those are ancient Buddhist, you know, wrestlings. Uh, those are internecine arguments. I, we, I won't use those words then. But, okay. If you're confident with them, I'm fine using them. I just not. No, no, I'm not. I, okay. I will use materialism. Let's, let's say materialism and spiritualism. Meaning the physical world? Materialism means the brain is consciousness. Okay. Consciousness. So there's nothing really outside of who we are. 
Yeah, we evolved enough that we're able to be a little bit conscious. So mm -hmm. you and I don't, sh there's, there's, uh, now this, it seems that there's nothing actually between you and me and the 600 miles between us. Right. There, there is literally 600 miles between us. Uh, our our yeah. cubed for the strength of energetic uh, signal from a point in 3D space, that's, that's not a lot of energy getting from me to you. Right. In 3D space. <clears throat> right? So, so there is no energy, literal, uh, literal. Physical. Yeah. There's no energy getting between the two of us. So you and I are not connected except with our history, our genetics. We share the same genetics. We're brother and sister. That's materialism. Okay. Spirituality or spirituality or yeah, yeah. spirituality says uh, you and I are imbued by a consciousness. That exists outside of us. That exists outside of us. Like we're both waves in the same ocean, we're both leaves on the same tree. We're yes. We're both sparks of the same source, uh, drops in the same river. Yeah, we're children we, of God. Or, or we're, we are a bigger consciousness is inhabiting my reality in order to learn and expand its understanding of reality. Yes. And is also inhabiting yours and is inhabiting everyone else's. And through all these different experiences, that consciousness is expanding its understanding of reality or right. it's being even right yeah. it's being yeah. and then when i have another child then it's it's it has expanded that consciousness now includes that child yes however you want to explain Whatever. it right because it encompasses catholicism it encompasses yeah. hinduism right. Su like sufism of, of islam yeah, yeah. All, all the sects and all the religions yeah it encompasses all that so that's where from a humanist perspective a materialist perspective it gets a little yeah 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 just about anything goes <laughs> yeah although i have to say when i when i started over from figuring out okay well i'm i'm setting aside everything i thought i believed now what am i going to believe it seemed to me, I say this and I, people don't seem to understand what I'm saying, so maybe it doesn't make sense or mean anything, but it seems to me that if you throw out religion, people are generally all saying the same thing when they're talking about spirituality. You throw out all the traditions and the structures and the codified beliefs, and you look at the or you look at the commonalities. Well, if you look at people, no. So I'm, I'm saying if you actually throw out, we're not gonna count what the Mormons believe. We're not gonna count what the Lutherans believe. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna count what the, I don't know. We're gonna, we're just gonna look at people who are spiritual, non-religious people. Yeah, but everyone is a, a, a Mormon or a, or a Lutheran, no? I no. Mean, I mean, like the er er group, er I think now is spiritual non-religious. Well, that's true. Erica, er Erica, my quartet leader, uh, she 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 was raised uh, religion free, but she's still in the Christian. Uh, I mean, near death experiences. If you are from India, your near death experience is going to be you go down a hall, you come to a guy with a book, he says wrong name, go back. You know, if you're in America, you see Jesus. So culture matters. Right. There is context. Yes. And I guess so. And, but I feel like, okay, you look at just bare bones Christianity. You look at bare bones Buddhism. You look at bare bones everything. They are all kind of saying the same thing. Yeah. You, but, or even I look at a Native American um, shaman and I read what they're saying. They're saying the same thing. 
and I read what this guru says, they're saying the same thing. I read what, you know, the Tao Te Ching says, oh, it's saying the same thing, right? They're all saying the same thing if I can make sure that I don't get caught up in dogma and like, oh, then that means you have to live these certain ways or you have to have these practices or you have to have these beliefs or whatever, then it seems pretty clear what the point of this is, kind of. Okay, but I want to ask, I want to, I want to cut between ethics and metaphysics. Okay. And Sam Harris is very careful on this point. You know, you can meditate, you can be conscious, you can wake up, you can have ethics, but we don't need to get into all the metaphysics. So, ethically, I guess metaphysically, this is why I alluded maybe to the Buddhist argument where are they in the Buddhist, don't they have quite a bit of an argument that there is no, there is no metaphysical consciousness outside of, of, of our biology? Isn't that a big strain in Buddhism? Far be it for me to know. And, uh, okay, all right, all right. Most religions, though, believe there's some consciousness outside of uh, biology. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm trying to think, well, what do I even mean when I'm saying that? If I say they're all saying the same thing, what do I think they're all saying, right? Yeah. I mean, obvious, obviously, ethically, they're all saying, uh, treat, treat, see you as me. Treat you Let's as be me. Let's be kind. Be kind. Uh, take you into consideration. Don't put myself above you. They're all saying right. that. And if, if I have some kind of spirituality and it only benefits me, well, then it's not really benefiting me. Or if I have some kind of practice that's only benefiting me, well, guess what? That's not really benefiting you. You, you have to... I guess this isn't necessarily what they're saying, but what I get from it, that the golden rule, is also... I, can't, I literally cannot only look out for my self-interest because if I try to do that, I'm hurting myself. Yes. Like, it's impossible to do that. So that's truly enlightened self-interest, really understanding the big picture. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Not like, well, I'll be, I'll be nice to you when it doesn't hurt me and because I'm a good person and I, you know, but, but like, like I literally cannot hurt you without hurting me yeah or hurt me without hurting you yeah 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 exactly so so yes that's pretty easy ethic ethically yes i think it's pretty easy ethically to say they're all saying the same thing metaphysically i would say most of humanity thinks there is something outside, but as most of humanity, as Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins might say, uh, deluded and lazy in their thinking. I think no. I, and Carl, I think so. <laughs> well, Carl Sagan and Sam Harris both, you know, said, left the, cra the door a crack open, you know, uh, with regard to uh, little children that remember other that no that remember de that that no details of other people's lives that they sh could not have otherwise known at least more more research should be done in that area and near me personally the near death experience I I I I feel confident in saying I know enough to say if I were an authority there is no there's no way to explain the near-death experience. Uh, it's just, there's too much of a weight of a body of, of, of experience. It's objectively known to be happening, and the things that happen just oh, t time and time and time again that are reported, there's just too much weight of evidence to say, you know, it, it, it's not real. Do, do you feel like the differences between the experiences discount them to some degree? No, that's never, for some reason, that has never bothered me. It never bothered me. Um, you know, you and I are Mormon, 
and um, have a Mormon and, uh, upbringing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I was raised Mormon, right? I right. mean, I still say I'm Mormon, but um, uh, when I had my faith change in 2003, I right off the bat, I had no problem with the with Joseph Smith having uh, seven different accounts that seemed contradictory of of his first vision. That that didn't bother me. Now, it bothered me that the first vision was used in the way it's used as a proof text, you know, but it does, these things are ineffable, meaning they, you're going to make, you're going to just, it's like you trying to tell, it's like a synesthete telling us, you know, how it is that they see, see colors when they, they, they listen to music or there's a guy that's recently been doing YouTube shorts. He's a blind guy and he said people are asking him, you know, what do you see? Is it like black? He says, well, that's like me asking you, what do you see out of your elbow? <laughs> yeah. So I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> well, I was asking about the differences between um Near death experiences and it's, oh yeah, it's it's. But can you see how that would make someone discount them? Yeah, yeah. If there really was a life after death, wouldn't they all be experiencing the same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. And 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 I I get that. It's just that there's elements of them, veridical elements, like like you know I went I went down to the cafeteria of the hospital. And lo and behold, my uncle was getting a candy bar from the machine. I totally busted him, you know, because <laughs> he doesn't eat candy. And, or little things like that, just over and over and over and over and over again. And so, I, I, it, yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. And uh, so, so, factually, I'm compelled. See, I knew all these things for decades, since 2003, when I first started reading near-death experiences, but I, I had this mental block, and the mental block was this. You and I, we are sort of kind of intelligent and conscious, maybe barely, enough that, you know, we have some sort of consciousness going on. And so I thought, okay, I have near-death experiences, uh, not I, but we, you, we humans, have one per what is it? Five percent of Americans have had a near-death experience, I believe. It, it's it's objectively speaking, uh, the 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 subjective part of the experience is objectively speaking happening, a lot. We have these. Well, do dolphins? Do elephants? Do crows? Do dogs? Do blades of grass? Do flowers? Do rocks? Do all them? Do they all have intelligence? And I had this mental block where I was like, wait, at what point did suddenly we get spirit? You know, did, did Neanderthals, did Homo floresiensis, you know? And I said, wait, I can't grok that, therefore it's not real. Which is why you were telling me the other day when you finally realized, who am I to say a blade of grass doesn't have consciousness? then suddenly that blows that problem out of the water, right? Well, if a blade of grass has consciousness, then all of those life forms that preceded us all could have had consciousness. Right. It's to me, it's, it's, yeah, to me, it's like saying there are no radio signals because I can't get them in this pen. Right. Well, there are radio signals. Even if you can't get them in this pen, they do exist. And, 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 and so we have evolved to get a very crude radio, you know, yeah, I don't know, somehow it just, yeah, my friend Joe, he said, I don't know what he said, but I was like, duh, I guess I had a mental block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and for me, like, I feel like there are so many personal experiences that I've had that I know there's something beyond me. Maybe, I mean, I'm willing to say maybe it could be my subconscious that's very powerful and intelligent beyond anything I understand. Okay, that could be it, right? Uh, 
based on my experiences, I could say, okay, that's it. And it's not some thing outside of me. It's just, I'm just more of a super being than I realize I am. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But like things like, things like praying or, or even just focusing or meditating, whatever you want to call it about something and having your mind opened and suddenly understanding it more than you understood it. And that's foreign to my reality, right? You don't but have that yours. happen to you. You don't ever have that happen to you? Not to my, not, I, I may just be, think it's all me. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh, I just had a great idea. Well, so for me, there's things like I lost, or one, someone in my family. So I have multiple children. I have six children. We have eight people living in a tiny house. We lose things. Somebody loses something. And I have found over, I've been doing this mom thing for like 24 years. I've found that if I stop and focus and pray, almost always, I will find it. And it happens in different ways. And some of them I can explain by, oh, I was able to trace back where I left it or blah, 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 or ask the person that lost it the right question so that they're able to trace it back and find it. Sometimes it's that, and that's totally explainable. But every once in a while, it'll just be like, not a vision, because I don't see things in my head, but uh, my brain is pulled in a certain direction. And I go in that direction, and I find it. Or um, I suddenly am like, suddenly I just know where it is. I'm like, okay, well, I think it's under the blah, blah. It's got to be under the blah, blah. And I go, and it's under the blah, blah. Or I, um, I'm trying to think of ones that are kind of different experiences that aren't all the same. But my, my brain just suddenly blanked out That's from That's okay. I mean... I was, I, you know, obviously Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris would say you're you're lazy and you're thinking you're deluding yourself. And 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 the one thing I can remember, they would say the same thing, right? The one thing I remember is in 1999, I was looking for a new job. I wanted to move from uh, uh, where I was at, at Agri Infrastructure, and I had offers from R.B. Williams and Hubbard Engineering and Gilbert. And uh, I thought I'd take the Hubbard Engineering. And to me, for some reason, this was important, you know. In retrospect, I'm like, in the grand scheme of things, this is so trivial. But to me, it was important at the time, and I was praying yeah. about it. And for a very unusual time in life, if not the first, I'd been reading in the Bible where Gideon, Gideon asks that there will be dew on a, on a mat if he, if he really is supposed to save Israel. And then, wait, wait, okay, there was dew on the mat only. Now the next morning, let's make no do on the mat and do everywhere else. So I, you know, I thought about this sort of sign seeking might be okay because I was really totally devout in the religion. I didn't want to do anything not allowed, right? And we're not supposed to seek for signs. Not yeah. supposed to seek for signs. I won't believe unless I see a sign. So I prayed, and I, this is reconstruction here. I think I probably prayed something like this. If I'm supposed to take the Hubbard engineering job, I'd be very grateful if maybe you could send me uh, a rab a bee, a, a, bir a, a, bir a bird, or a rabbit, or a coyote, or something, so that I'll know that taking this job at Hubbard is the right thing for me. And I was driving to work one day, uh, 80th Street and University in Mesa, heading towards Sossaman, halfway between 80th Street and Sossaman, westward. A coyote came from the north, from, from my right, loped across the street, stopped right in front of my car, turned and looked at my car, stopped, and then loped on right across the street. And that's the only coyote I have ever seen. Yeah. You've never seen a coyote in I've town. I've seen one in the city limits, no. And I don't think I've ever seen one in the in, in real yeah, life. I've seen, well, I might have seen one in the wild, but never, yeah. Yeah. So that was what would you call a remarkable experience? Yeah, you're that like that was completely remarkable. And I had been humble, you know, a bird or a rabbit. Yeah, 
you know, but they were like, no, we're going to give them the coyote. So, yeah. but again, you can explain those away. So coincidence. What, okay. But okay. So I just go with the near death experiences and the childhood experiences. And those are scientifically inexplainable. But I feel like someone else can explain my experiences that I've had away, but I cannot, and I am not being sloppy because the reason yes. I that I have six kids and there's eight people in the house. If it was just me looking for stuff I had lost, then it would just be that I'm remembering where I put it. Oh my or, goodness. You didn't lose them. I didn't lose it. These are things oh that anyone my goodness. might have lost and I can find them. Well, this is the thing, you know, you're not slouch. You know, you're not a slouch. You know, you're no dummy. <laughs> you know, right. objectively that you're as intelligent as just about anybody else and you know now that's good enough for you and for me i mean you you and i know you don't see a coyote every decade <laughs> you don't see a coyote every decade or every lifetime in town no who's ever yeah. seen a coyote in town yeah crossing a semi suburban arterial street no yeah, that's not normal. Yeah. So the other experiences I've had, maybe I've told you, I was going to cross, I was at a red light. The light turns green. I immediately go to push the gas. My foot won't go. And I try to push the gas again. My foot won't, like nothing happens. I don't push the gas. My brain's saying push the gas and my foot's not pushing the gas. And I'm like, what the heck? And all of a sudden a car comes and zooms across the intersection running the red light, it's red light. And if I had gone, I would have been side, uh, I would have been hit right where I was and where my baby in the car seat was. Yeah. Right. One, one or both of us would have, it would have hit us or very easily could have hit us. Yeah. And to me, I look at that. I'm like, there was no part of me that knew that car was coming. So that my foot refused to listen to me when I told it to push the gas pedal. There was no part of like, I, I, I mean, to me, I'm like, I can't explain that away. I can't say, and maybe like if I'm a superhuman and some part of my superhumanness knew that this car was going to go and my dumb self said, push the gas and my superhuman self said, no, we're not going to do it. That's dumb. Okay. But oh. Yeah, yeah. But well, I don't well, I mean, yeah, you, well, is that more likely than that there's some kind of something outside of me that... Well, the, I think the problem is this. It's the Occam's razor. It, the, 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 from the materialist the perspective, do not multiply entities. So why suppose that there's something outside you? Well, the, the problem is the floodgates are already broken because... There are already unexplainable things, and it's only one. It's consciousness, and that opens, unfortunately, from the scientist's perspective, this huge Pandora's box now. We've got this thing called consciousness that's, that's basically the god of the gaps that can do anything. And, and, and in the, well, I, I want a just specific response to what you said in the disaffected Mormon underground in the many years since my faith changed. You know, the... the the um, the proverbial uh, uh, grievance is, you know, God can help Peter Priesthood find his keys, but then there's organisms that thrive on living inside a, a kid's eye and make them blind, you know, in Africa. And so, you know, lots of people get in crashes. I just got in a crash. I just rear-ended right. a lady a Friday. You know, totaled my car. It, it's not totaled because it's not insured. I'm getting it fixed right now. But but we know that. You know that. You're aware that it doesn't matter whether you got in that crash in the big scheme of things. And yet you didn't. And yet right. you feel something, your, your foot wouldn't go down. And so th these things, scientifically speaking, they're very maddening. Because, but, but, but because... I cannot say as a good scientist that near-death experiences and childhood experiences of other lives are 
explainable in any other way than, a, than another entity, the entity exists. Okay, but wouldn't, okay, if you don't want to multiply beings, so Occam's razor would prove we are all waves in the same ocean. There's one consciousness. Oh, <laughs> you got it. The, the, and we're all different manifestations of it. Like, that's way simpler than oh. saying there's 8 billion people and however many in the universe. Oh, my goodness. Well, there you go. Oh, my goodness. There's one entity. There's only one entity. There's only one entity. Pan, uh, a friend of mine pointed out that you we could call it panentheism. God is in, in all and, and is all. Yeah. 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 What, okay. I have a thought. Okay. Okay. So this brings up the question. Um, <laughs> let me set the stage. This earth is a multiple, multiple, no, is a massively multiplayer online role playing educational game. Right. And I'm just a character in it. You are a character in it. I don't know what they're learning from me, but okay. Now, you have faith that I'm not a non-player character. Okay. You're just one, you're another someone like me. I'm a player. Right. I'm an this is an avatar. I'm an avatar of a player. You are actually an avatar of okay. a player. Okay. We are all avatars. Okay. Of players. Different players. Well, I mean, we're well, making this. Which way are we making it up? <laughs> no, okay. Well, we're all avatars. Okay, we're all avatars. Question Are there non player characters? That are just computer people. That are just computer people and don't have, that are not yes. children of God. That are not, they don't have spark they don't have soul soul they don't have their their radio oh my goodness this is this is no this is a very interesting subject okay so so joe and jane have a baby is god consciousness the waves the river obligated to go meld with that baby and 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 have experience with it is 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 god consciousness spirit soul obligated to spin up an instance and go play that character that's that's my that's my question well so the way that i look at it which doesn't matter other than to me <laughs> the way i look at it to me when i talk about god I, an, uh, a synonym for God for me is life. Okay. Life is God. If that baby's alive, God's there. Okay. Oh, so yes. It's, yes. it's not obligation. It's just the way it is. Okay. Here's God's a, there. Here's another question. It could just be God there. It could just be an informing consciousness in the ether. That is, that is personalizing in this instant. Mm -hmm. But near death experiences and indicate. Now, childhood memories could indicate this, just they're tapping into this knowledge of other lives they remember details of this guy in the civil war that got shot or or this peasant you know in in iraq they remember they're just tapping into this that's conceivable because you're saying you're assuming in this that mm, elizabeth pops up and consciousness fills elizabeth then Elizabeth dies and consciousness just goes back to the full thing and pops up in someone else. And that's, that individual isn't the same as the Elizabeth individual. It's just a blip. It's just a wave in the ocean, right? It's just another part of the consciousness, but there's no connection between 
So I don't have past lives. Consciousness has past lives. Yeah. Yeah. That that's kind of what you're saying. Yeah, that's the hypothesis here. That's the 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 the, the line of thought at the moment. Uh, if so, yes. If or, as opposed to there's a stream of consciousness that is keeps popping up as different lives, and I can go back in my own stream of consciousness and say this was my life and my life, and it's all whatever my name is when I'm not Elizabeth, right? Right, and that fits that fits with the evidence of the children. But then mm -hmm. you throw in the near-death experience. To, uh, well, there's actually three items Carl Sagan mentioned. There, I don't know if he mentioned three death. Well, I better not say three. He also mentioned that people are barely able to affect random number, number gen generators, which could be something about energy, local energy from the brain and like the computer. The, they can affect them to a small degree by, by their thinking? Barely, yes, to a significant... A small, tiny... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Okay, that, that I think, that could just be our brains affecting the computer. So, but then near-death experience is another one. So the idea, the, uh, the, the line of thinking that we're, we're, we're pursuing at the moment, questioning, the line of questioning at the moment, fits with childhood memories, but I don't see how it fits with near-death experience, because near-death experience says, here I am, I'm dead, my body's gone. But uh, I'm still here. Am I just transient uh, uh, vibrations dying away, or... You know, I'm going and having all these visions and meeting my guide and 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 my my ancestors, my significant soul people, uh, you know, and they're telling me things about what I need to do, uh, mo better in my life. I need to go treat my, I need to be there for my son, and I I need to go give a phone call to to that certain person, you know. So I have a purpose to, to, I have a mission in life to be there for other people. And, and I'm getting this message, and that's to me. So the moment of death, I just don't suddenly, there's Become no, bigger consciousness. The instrument isn't the whole personality. The avatar, okay. it's not just, the avatar is not creating the wholeness of my identity. Right, and, and I also, so that would fit in with what I tend to lean toward believing about life before and after death and birth. I would tend to believe that there is an aspect of me that continues, right? That, that I have a, a soul that is me. Yeah. So, I, I mean, and I guess what you're saying is that's not necessarily consistent with my idea. Oh, well, God is life and life is expanding itself in each of us and blah, blah, blah. Um, and there's only one being. So I'll have to think about that. Like in my, I tend to think, yeah, it all works. It all works. Um, well, and partly I think about it in ways that are, that feel practically, that feel practical, right? I can think about it this way and it works yeah. for me, right? I, I often think about God is just the, f the flow of love. God is love energy flowing and pulling everyone toward more love and more light. That's what God is, is just yeah. this love energy that's flowing. And sometimes we get caught up in an eddy over on the side and we're not really in that flow and we're not moving toward love, but then some, sometimes we'll get unstuck in that eddy and we'll, we'll get back on the flow or whatever. That's a practical, do I really think that's what God is? No, but that's a practical way of me thinking about it that works for me. Like, okay, I trust, I trust that there is love and I trust that that love is inexorably pulling me and humanity toward a good place. I believe that. We've talked a little bit about the scientific factuality, a little bit of speculations, logic of how things could work. And granted, we were only barely intelligent. There's a lot, right? Barely conscious, barely intelligent. We, there's, yeah, barely. Humans just aren't such a much. Um, 
I'd also like to talk about maybe about ethics. I have a specific question about ethics. So I feel like we uncovered some sloppy thinking of mine and I'd like to explore it a little bit or at least identify it so that I can make sure I'm really grasping it and can think about it, Yeah. which I said yeah. before. So you're saying it doesn't make sense to um, think we're all waves in the same ocean and which is kind of, I think, a Buddhist um, idea, but I could be wrong <laughs> and believe in reincarnation, a Hindu idea or whatever. I don't know. I shouldn't even try to pretend I know where things come from, but I believe in reincarnation. Like those two things don't work together. Is that kind of what you're saying? Or not what you're saying, but is that? Well, I think we have limited ability to uh, a lot of this is speculative. We just need to, I mean, it could all work together. It's like my mental block. I was like, if a blade of grass can't have a near-death experience, then it's all hooey. Well, you know, maybe I had a mental block. And so I'm not, I mean, is there a good reason why those can't both be true? That, yeah, that's what I'm trying to, I would like to hear if it feels to you like those are kind of contradictory, then I would, I want to really understand that so I can think about it and say, do I think, yeah, that is contradictory. I can't bo believe both those things or could I, can those work together? And I still, right? Yeah. What I would say instead is that our, our ultimate theory needs to include these elements that we have uh, accepted are well attested. So there's an element of being all waves in one ocean, and there's an element of with the second you die, there's still personality. There is a capability for, there is personality. Okay. It's like being a wave and a particle. Light is a wave and a particle. Uh -huh. we have and particles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is <laughs> right. This, right. The, okay. I, uh, this is okay. I really like this. Where are we? Okay. The meta, meta, I mean, okay. Our method here. Our method. We are comfortable with paradox. Yeah. We you, want, you have to be. <laughs> we want to throw out things that are not well attested, that are that are that are lame that are they're just lazy thinking and we want to accept things that are well attested and not accept garbage explanations like frankly so far all the materialist explanations of near death experiences are garbage now well, you got to try you got to try but they're pretty weak. It's like Sam Harris said about, <laughs> about uh, 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 you know, I love humanism. I love secular humanism. I truly do. And we'll talk about ethics, and this is why. I love secular humanism. And Sam Harris says, someday we, we got to come up with up. a substitute for Sunday school that's not embarrassing. <laughs> right. So b before we, really quick, it occurs to me, I'm... I'm assuming I'm understanding when you talk, when you say near death experiences, I'm assuming I understand what you mean, but it's not necessarily clear. If someone's listening to us talking, okay. they may not be assuming the same thing I'm assuming. So let me tell you what I think you're saying, okay. and then you can tell me what you really are saying. I, I think based on what you've said that you must be referring to the fact that people, they are medically dead, like they are, they're declared dead they leave their bodies and then they go and they observe things that are actually happening in other parts of of the world right the hospital they're in or whatever and and it is actually documented and that can't be refuted that they went and they saw something that they couldn't have known any other way then they come back and they are suddenly not dead anymore is that what you're saying? Like that, that they're having these experiences that prove that at least after their body is dead, something is still alive and observing. 
you, you've just touched on the uh, point that there are some veridical elements, veridical out-of-body experience elements of near-death experiences that are, that, uh, yeah. If, if they are, uh, if they are accepted, uh, they, they, they would, they can't be explained by brain as consciousness. So, yeah, so that's the wave, the idea that there is a, that person has a consciousness after that body is dead. Well, well, the, um, okay, the, when we say they're dead, they may not really be dead. Death, we don't know what death really is. Right. But so, what we call death. But what we tend to call death. What we call death. So, so the, one of the difficulties, yeah, before I go launch into a survey of near-death experiences, one of the difficulties is that we, we call them dead, but it's very well possible that not a single person that ever had a near-death experience was really ever dead. Okay. Okay. And so... Um, do you want me to do a, a, a survey of them? Well, because I feel like you're taking near-death experiences and what we, what can't be argued about them as a postulate of your building your spirituality on. Yes. In which case, for me or anyone in participating in this conversation, we need to understand what, what that postulate, because I don't know for sure. I don't know what you've gotten from those that you feel like, well, it has to agree with this. Yeah. Okay. The thing I said was one of them, right? That yeah. that somehow they're there. Okay. I'll start with the present. Uh, the best uh, uh, research I know about. The, uh, at that present, the best research of appeal to authority. Let's do the appeal to authority method first is the Division of Perceptual Studies of the University of Virginia. Okay, this department is uh, studying, I guess, consciousness, uh, perception, uh, consciousness, uh, possibly looking into consciousness. Can it be just explained as, as a function, a manifestation of the brain, of the biology? Okay. Uh, they, they are studying psychic phenomenon, like can you affect the random number generator? They are studying the child, ex the experiences of little children, uh, the memories of little children of other lives. And they are studying near-death experience. So lots of these things that are being perceived, they're studying rigorously. The, the, Okay, th they have been studied more or less since around the 1950s. That's, that might not be good. We know that about 5% of people have these experiences, these transcendent visions. Okay? And they say a lot of spiritual things that are good. They get changed. They, they get changed uh, in immeasurable ways. Some of them, they have psychic gifts, you know. There's just lots of ways you can study this, and this is why science is so fun, right? You get to create all these scales and measurement criteria, and you get to interview people and run studies, and that didn't work out. Well, let's design a different study. So, so this is being studied rigorously, but there are... They're, they're the one element is what these people are saying. And that is, that is all over the place, like you said. It's yeah. just all over the place. Basically, I died, and yet I wasn't dead. But it's, it's totally all over the place. They tend to come back with these, take good care of your kids and your friends and your family. They understand love better. They understand connectedness and love towards all of creation, specifically one another. Specifically the people that are in the room with you right now at right. the grocery store. Specifically, specifically like Mr. Rogers. Whoever you're talking with, 
that's your purpose in life. And then all sorts of, you know, trappings. There was a building, there was a garden, there was my aunt, there was a being of light. I don't know what to call it, I'll say male. You know, I don't yeah. know, I'll say God. And, right. Uh, all sorts of that. Um, but there's also this element of I was out of the hospital and I heard the surgeon he I saw the surgeon like this you know flapping his wing flapping his elbows like a wings you know or I saw this nurse put my teeth under the table and and these things that end up being verifiable they call them veridical out of body experiences those are interesting scientifically because now, those could be the same as, as me on my couch or on my bed and having also an out-of-body experience. So those, again, do not say anything about death. They say perception remotely, consciousness outside of brain. Okay. I don't know if there's more I need to say about that. I, I will say they're cultural dependent, like I said. The guy in India that's been raised around Hinduism, he's going to go to a guy with a big book that says, oh, uh, oh we, didn't mean, uh, we didn't mean Taylor the baker, we meant Taylor the tailor. Go back, you know. Right. So you're saying that you feel like science has verified many of the claims of these people in a way that, that means that it's hard to argue that there's some kind of against the idea that there's some kind of consciousness separate from our physical being. I'm, uh, from I mean, our, you're saying from our brain. Well, I mean that, because science is a, is a matter of, of coming up with a hypothesis, designing an experiment, running the, you know, you do your null hypothesis, and if you can't prove the null hypothesis, you know, there, there's methods. We have the scientific method. And we run experience, experiments, and they're doing that. What I'm saying is, if you are really aware, not ignorant, of the full body of what has been gathered and studied and checked, if you really are informed, as Carl Sagan and Sam Harris seem to be, you're going to be a little bit careful about saying, your number one aren't going to say, it's all hooey. Mm -hmm. And you're going to probably say, eh, those, those need more study. You're going to be a little more humble, yeah. You're going to be a little more humble, right. And, and yeah, it's just, I mean, I, I feel compelled to say, I can't believe anymore in the finality of death. I'm really interested in where this is going, ethically. Okay, so what's your ethical question that you have? Well, I love secular humanism. Can you tell, like, define that? Secular humanism is, you know, living the golden rule. There's no more. There's no more. When I, when I say we had a great talk, Elizabeth, that could be the last time I ever see you. That's beautiful. That is deeply reverent. Well, what? I don't know if I'm understanding what you're... When, when I... Yeah what you're getting that's causing that feeling of reverence or what, what that means to you. I don't know if I'm understanding so. Okay. There was a cute little short that Ricky Gervais, the actor, did. And, and his foil says to him, I don't get it. If you don't believe in afterlife, wouldn't you just rape and murder all you want? He says, yeah, I do. She says, you do? He says, yeah, which is none. I don't want to. Why would I? <laughs> and he says, and, and he goes on to say, 
Every moment I have could be my last. Every blade of grass I see, every sunset, every sunrise, every time I see my child, every time I see my loved ones could be the last time and before I go into the night. And to me, that is supremely beautiful. That is supremely reverent. That is just, yeah. as Ram Das says, he used to be Richard Alpert. Uh, Ram Das says, we're all just walking each other home. Now, even yeah. if you take that metaphorically, it's very beautiful. And when I go in a, to bed tonight, and I put my head on my pillow, I now go to sleep forever. So, that's so it's like the temporariness we were talking about before, right? But it's okay that it's, it's temporary. That almost adds to the beauty of the experience that it's temporary, right? Or could be potentially temporary, right? Spiritually, no, temporary, but yeah. yes, spiritually, ethically, beautifully. I just, I, I have no problems with living as an atheist right which i was doing three months ago right well because i i maybe i i shouldn't speak for all religious people but my experience in religion and with many religious people is the assumption that if we didn't have religion if we didn't have the rules from god we would be raping and murdering and pillaging like that's that's inevitable yeah, all we want. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, a harmful. Uh, oh, don't get us started. Even, I I can't believe that. I mean, not that I fully believed that, but there were aspects of that that can't be denied in in the things that I did believe, and and um, yeah, that that really that's that's part of why I have issues with religion. I just feel like. Don't go around teaching people that they are so bad that if they could get away with it, if they could, what they would want to do is everything bad that they could do. Like, it's just not true. People just do not do that once they are free from that idea. They don't. Yeah. Well, people that's, are really good. Yeah. I mean, that that's our natural xenophobia and our natural fears, right? Obviously. We, 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 yeah, yeah, we're all very insecure. I, we're, we're all very, very insecure. And, 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 and I, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, but, but yeah, I, I, it is, it is, it is, uh, easy. It does hurt. It hurts. It hurts to, to, to have people. Well, misunderstandings among us all is, are, are, are hard. We need to faith in each other. That's the yeah. thing. It's a lack of faith. It's, it's well, a failure of faith. Because it, it, we cannot trust other people because we cannot trust ourselves. Right? If we believe that, if we believe that if I didn't have all of these things on me holding me back, I would just break loose and do terrible things. Well, and, and partly they put it on the devil, or right? So it's not necessarily me that's so bad. It's the devil that would make me be bad if I didn't have all these things. But there's an element of just I would be bad. But if I can't trust me, how can I trust you? Yeah. Well, that's why I like Mormonism, because we are good. We are yeah. good. We are children of God. I, I like that about Mormonism. We are, we are good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, except we do believe that we need all of those all the commandments and rules to teach us how to be we couldn't just be yeah. we're not good enough to just know how to live on our own we need everybody else to tell us how to live and, and yeah and that's a theological argument I, I i perceive in mormonism is the between are we fallen or are we are we the are we you know the pre, the, the pre-existence came to earth for an experience to be tested to have a body versus i mean there's two plans of salvation is the plan of salvation that you lived before with God, you came to earth and you're going to go back? Or is the plan of salvation that Adam fell, Christ had the atonement? They're, they're both the plan of salvation. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's kind of two views living together in Mormonism. The one, 
to me, the one that was always informed me the most beautifully, personally, was pre-existence, earth, eternal destiny with 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 the with with the the the, the, the source, with yeah. the father and the mother. Yeah, and I don't know. Did you did mom read the book before I was born to you? Yes, that that yes. was that, that was, was my awesome. Doctrine. Yes, that's my doctrine. That's your religion. And and the picture of of Heavenly Father standing, sitting in the throne and the kids running toward him after they'd lived a good life and, uh, you know, Jesus standing next to him. But but you get to go back and be with God. Like, that that was my life. That was my entire life. Yes. That's all I wanted. That's, yeah, to, to, that's, to, that's our Mormonism. Yes, that was my Mormonism. Yeah, that's, that's our Mormonism. Yeah. So, okay. I said I lived as an atheist. I never called myself an atheist. I'm not interested in that. I'm like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why Why would I call myself an atheist? Um, but I think it's beautiful. Yeah. I think the ethics are bulletproof. Now, now, now that I believe in the afterlife, it's all just a massively multiplayer online role-playing educational game. What does it matter if I live or die? What? <laughs> My kids will miss me, you know. Uh, if I get in a crash, I get in a crash. If, if the child in Africa has a worm in his eye and has to live his life blind, he thought that would be a good life to try to live. And so you're saying that when you, because you believe in the afterlife, you lose that preciousness of temporariness. Yeah, I chose to come into this life because I wanted a vacation. I, I wanted a life where I could just have a happy home with Elizabeth and my parents and just not me. be the luckiest man on earth. Yeah. Not me, Elizabeth. No, you, yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah, you with you. Oh, okay, with me, you. Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, okay. with you. Yeah. With yes, you, Elizabeth. I, mar I, I married Elizabeth. She's my ex-wife also. Okay, but, <laughs> sorry. But, yeah, I, I, I just okay, feel, you know. I feel like, and, and I guess this is what we, I was talking about before, where I'm like, there felt like an either or, but I feel like maybe these are false dichotomies, right? It's either we have this beautiful temporariness of the atheist life or we can believe in the afterlife and suddenly it all becomes fushy. But, but I don't know. I feel like I believe both of those things. I believe life is so precious to me now. Like it never was in my previous spiritual um, tradition when I, when I was, anyway, um, it's very precious to me now. And I, before I felt like that, what you're saying, when I was in the church and very religious, I felt very much like, well, this life doesn't really matter. I'm doing the best I can. It's all going to be made up in the afterlife. You know, if I die tomorrow, no big deal. I'll see my family all again later. I'll be, you know, it'll be fine. As long as I'm good, as long as I'm, you know, keeping the commandments. Keep the and commandments. Yeah, living, being a good Mormon woman. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. As soon as I had my shift and was like, oh, whoa, then it was like, today is precious. This life is precious. Like, I have to get all the pleasure and joy and love out of life that I can because I don't have eternity anymore. Why? Why not? Because I will never be me in this situation again. I will never be Elizabeth again, ever. No matter whether I'm born again as something else, I will never have this again. I will never be so-and-so's mother in this family again. I will never be living in this place, in this home, right? I'll never be, this will never happen again. This minute will never happen again. Like wow. nothing, nothing that's happening will ever happen again. So it's comforting to me to think, well, maybe there's an in-between lives and I'll have another life and I'm a, I'm a continuing consciousness, but it doesn't change for me the preciousness of what I'm doing now. And my 
um, daughter just got home. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Well, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So you can, you, you can, you can accept that there is consciousness outside the brain, that you may have a life between lives, that you may have been here before, and to get really woo-woo, I may be you, and you may be me, and still be just as precious as, as, the, as the stark secular humanist yeah. about this moment. Yeah. yeah, and we we know there's all these dangers about religion. Now I'm going to set myself up as an authority and lead you all astray. And it takes religion to get good people to do bad things. Right. And, and we 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 we're, I'm sure we're both passionate about that. But I think that's beautiful. That's a good place to wrap up. Because um, I've been worried about the ethics. Yeah. I have more questions, you know, but I do think that that. Clearly, all, all seemingly reliable <laughs> um, information we have about it always points to reverence about the current moment, take yeah. serious you as, as, a, as, a, as an avatar of consciousness. Yeah. Take good care of the earth. Don't use your religion as an excuse to trash the earth. Or to trash the Muslims. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or to think you're better than anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. I love talking. Hopefully we'll get to talk again soon. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we we maybe talk to some other people. That'd be Once fun. Once we get our rhythm, you know, that would be really cool. That'd be fun. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Good luck with everything. You too. Okay, bye bye. -bye.